Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Weekend driving ban. Pff, probably has to do some of those 15-minute cities. Uh, airport takeover. No grant for you. And a metal lunch. <laughs> Right, boom, we got it. Let's dive right in. German minister threatens indefinite driving bans on the weekends. All right, the ruling coalition has been fighting over legislation that sets out binding climate targets. There you have the individual, quite serious. Germany's transport minister is threatening to, to ban driving on weekends to meet climate goals if the ruling coalition does not pass reforms to Climate Protection Act by July. So there goes your summer. The fact that the amendment is still not enforced leads to considerable legal and factual uncertainties, liberal politician Volker Wissing wrote in a letter to the parliamentary group leaders of the coalition. German outlet BILD reported Thursday, this serves neither the climate nor the reputation of the federal government, he said. A reduction in traffic to help meet the climate goals would only be possible through measures that are difficult to communicate to the public, such as comprehensive and indefinite driving bans on Saturdays and Sundays, Wissing added. The federal coalition government made up of the center-left Social Democrats, the Greens, and Liberal Free Democrats has been at odds for months over issues including a payment card for refugees, Germany's debt break, and lately, elephants which is interesting. Maybe we'll have a look at that. The planned amendment to the emissions reduction law allows climate goals to be reviewed for compliance by looking at all sectors together instead of individually. If the overall target is missed by two years in a row, then the federal government is to decide in which sector and with which measures the permitted total amount of carbon dioxide emissions is to be achieved by 2030. So don't go ahead and buy a car because uh, you can only drive it to work and back home and uh, to the grocery store at selected scheduled times during the week. You'll receive your card in the mail. And if you miss your groceries that week, unfortunately, uh, but we do offer a delivery service, which is about $100 uh, per uh, delivery. Don't worry about it. So yeah, Germany, see you later. Elephants trample on German coalition's fragile vibes. What's this all about? Trophy hunting imports. There you go. Okay, so they're arguing about that too, which is probably not a big deal. All right, so what's going on? Uh, if you've been watching uh, Twitter or the news the past uh, couple of days, there's all kind of protests going on everywhere. Canada, at ports, on bridges. And it's not the honking all over again. It's a bunch of uh, people that are pro-Palestinian and pro-Hamas. Uh, and anti-Israel, and I get it, like war sucks, pick a side, but uh, Hamas are terrorists, and it doesn't matter what Israel's doing to them, they started it, so Israel's making sure it doesn't happen again, and that's the way I see it, like sure, it's bad, it's terrible, it's awful, but they literally walked into the country and killed a bunch of people, took a bunch of hostages, still holding them, and everyone's upset that Iran, or sorry, that Israel is uh, trying to bomb them and eliminate them. Well, the Palestinians, it's not them, it's the Hamas, it's the terrorist government. So anyway, breaking as part of a nationwide coordinated attacks on travel and infrastructure, militant pro-Palestinian uh, protesters have shut down the road to arrivals and departures at Seattle-Tacoma International Airport. So let's get a quick look at what's happening here. So they have a group of people on their bicycles, uh, some cars just blocking the traffic, and they're waving the Palestinian flag. And then you have all of the travelers who are like, what the f- My plane's leaving in an hour. Stupid. So they're obviously like all super upset. There's lots of birds flying, and they don't have wings. So what else is going on here? Uh, just scrolling down, here's another image of the people walking. So what's the deal, right? They're allowed to totally shut down um, the roads? Like what's going on? Where are the police? Well, 
not only uh, in airports, but also all over the bridge. So if you're late for work, you've got a great excuse because uh, pro-Palestine protesters stopped traffic for nearly five hours. Police reportedly arrested about 30 individuals who reportedly chained themselves to vehicles. After the police arrested the protesters, they had to wait for tow trucks to arrive to remove the protesters' vehicles on the bridge. Double whammy. The protests throughout the country were part of an economic blockade as the protesters target the global economy for its complicity uh, in Israel's ongoing genocide against the Palestinian people. And not only this, we have the uh, stop oil protesters as well all over uh, the place. Let's have a look. Four hours. Literally, a handful of people. Please calm down. I mean, like, the people don't understand. Like, he's like, I have places to go. I don't care about what you think. Like, you're disrupting uh, everyone's life. And, uh, yeah, so bring the police in. Why did it take so long? Well, in Florida, they don't play. Okay, here we go. In Florida, we drag these people out on the road and arrest them. Absolutely, you should. And the chant in the background is how many kids did they kill today? And the answer is zero. They don't kill kids. Um, how many hostages in Hamas have died? You know what I mean? Like, pretty much all of them, I would say. Uh, the war cabinet decides to hit back forcefully at Iran for Saturday's missile and drone attack. So if you've been sleeping uh, under a rock, then uh, guess what? We just barely averted World War III. If uh, Biden had uh, any testicles inside of his scrotum, then uh, he probably would have done something to Iran instead of, you know, giving them $230 billion, uh, releasing, I should say, $232 billion, which they obviously bought a bunch of rockets and sent them to Israel. I believe two or three got through and the rest were taken care of by the Iron Dome. So here we have it. Uh, unsourced report. Channel 12 claims the war cabinet has made the decision to hit back clearly and forcefully against Iran for its missile and drone attack Saturday night. The response will be designed to send the message that Israel will not allow an attack of that magnitude against it to pass without a reaction, the report says. The response will also be designed to make plain that Israel will not allow the Iranians to establish the equation that they have sought to assert in recent days. This appears to be a reference to Iran's warning that future Israeli strikes on Iranian territory, including its international diplomatic premises, will henceforth again be met by Iranian retaliatory strikes on Israel. And why is it so important? Because uh, economically, geopolitically, it's going to affect the entire globe. Oil prices are rising, stocks are crashing, bond yields are up, stocks are down. Yeah, so people are moving their money around. Uh, not good. So, World War Three. Still in play. Number of tents set up by unhoused people. So this is the new name for homeless people or uh, vagrants, vagrants, whatever, migrants, vagrants. <laughs> yeah, vagabonds, right? Unhoused people rising city data shows. Uh, so this is uh, shelter in parks. Can't afford rent? Go buy a tent. The number of tents set up by unhoused people in encampments has more than doubled in Toronto in the past year, new data from the city shows. March 15th, 2024, there were 210, sorry, 202 tents across the city. That compared to 82 on the same day a year ago, more than doubled. According to data from the city's Parks, Forestry, and Recreation Division in 2021, the same day, and during the pandemic, there were 291 tents in Toronto. The data also suggests that people are taking shelters in parks that haven't seen encampments before. March 15th this year, the number of locations where there were encampments was 72, while on the same day last year it was 24. So there's three times as many parks being inhabited by unhoused people, and uh, twice as many people in those parks. Advocates say they are not surprised by the rising numbers and called on the city and the province to take steps to improve the situation facing unhoused people. These steps include keeping open 24-hour winter respite spaces set to close Monday as part of the city's winter service plans and implementing provincial rent control on new rental uni units. Yeah, 
So the big deal is, is uh, there's not enough houses and there's too many people and there's more people coming and there's no way they can build enough houses in this amount of time with all the red tape and interest rates are high. Builders don't want to build. Why would you want to borrow a bunch of money at 5% interest plus and uh, build a house and then pay that off it means that the money that you're going to be receiving from that commercial property or that rental property or whatever is going to be a lot less than it could be. Banks are less likely to loan money to certain people because of the interest rates and the uh, the chance of um, bankruptcy, right? So anyway, it's growing. People are becoming homeless all over the city. There's no escaping it. I seen a Mrs. Uh, from New York. She was like, my taxes are way up. Filling up my oil tank is like quadrupled um i mean like i'm a homeowner i got two cars my insurance on two cars like five thousand dollars a year she said they're not crazy cars or anything like that so you know the government is spending money well where do they get that money they borrow it from the federal reserve or the bank of canada which are both private institutions they're not federally operated they're private institutions and they borrow that money and then how do they get the money to pay it back well they tax you with carbon taxes and sugar taxes and infrastructure taxes sales taxes capital gains taxes and the canadian budget's actually coming out today so it's gonna be super interesting to see what christian freeland uh has to say about that because she went shoe shopping the other day uh actually she didn't go anywhere she had people come to her and she went ahead and got some new shoes and uh everyone's like great good for you you rich person having people come deliver shoes to you how convenient must that be great all right, uh, if you're white, you ain't right. Asians too, guess what? Uh, David Staples here. Why are white and Asian university students blocked from Trudeau Liberals grant program? Good question, sounds like discrimination at the uh, very least, if not racism. Uh, the University of Alberta and other Canadian universities are awarding hundreds of substantial graduate and undergraduate scholarships for scientific research just now, but white and Asian students need not apply. White and Asians are ineligible for these particular government grants in the health and humanities that pay out $6,000 for the school year. These students might well have attained the highest level of academic achievement, but the Trudeau Liberals have ruled out uh, that one class of scholarships are reserved only for students who identify as black. So identify as. So like, what is that? Like, do I need to prove that I am uh, black with a DNA test? Or can I identify as black? Well, I mean, I grew up in an a urban area. I uh, grew up fatherless. I grew up uh, surrounded by drugs, crime, prostitution, uh, gangs, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm white. But I identify with black culture. I like rap music. So uh, I feel like I'm black. I'm whack. How about that? I'm, I'm a white black guy. I'm whack. Many of us are convinced on principle that race should never be a major factor in judging people, including when it comes to hiring or promotion, except when it's the government trying to equalize everything. And the way you make it equal is by separation, okay? Labeling. There you go. We're all equal now because you're not me and I'm not you. All right, this uh, belief used to be strongly held by folks across the political spectrum has been preached to generations of Canadians. The goal is always to see each person as a unique individual and to assess them on what they say or do, not on the color of their skin, hair, or eyes. This belief is now associated with conservatives. For example, it's explicitly spelled out in regards to post-secondary institutions in Alberta United Conservatives November 2023 Declaration of Principles and Policies. Well done. UCP says, along with guaranteeing freedom of speech and freedom of association at our universities, the Alberta government should ban post-secondary institutions from the use of race as a factor in any admissions program or procedure. They should. Ensure post-secondary institutions shall be places of free thought and learning of employable skills by eliminating all diversity, equity, and inclusion offices. Please. University and colleges are not places for indoctrination of identity politics, reverse racism, or radicalization. Yeah, and that's the deal. Uh, basically, DEI is the new um, conformity. So if you don't conform, then you're out. You're not included. So how can it be inclusive if you're literally separating people based off of that? Why is the new funding important? These new funds will help address the disproportionate underfunding of black scholars at all stages of their careers. The support for black scholars will help strengthen efforts to break down barriers and address in inequities. In turn, this will contribute to making Canada's research culture more equitable, diverse, and inclusive to augmenting Canada's innovation potential. 
But you're going to be taking a, a pool of people and giving them an opportunity where they not necessarily are academically there. So you're, what you're doing is creating a, an unlevel playing field. You're taking people who are academically uh, inferior and avoiding people who are academically superior. So you're not going to have the best outcome. There was a... What was it? I can't remember if it was in Chicago. We covered the story like last week. Anyway, uh, they're going to stop reporting uh, drug addicted babies now because it disproportionately affects black people. So crack babies are gone. Check out the episode. They don't exist anymore because we don't report it. Just like crime. You can't have crime statistics if people are getting let out all the time and not being uh, arraigned, let alone charged, convicted, tried. Anyway, there it is. The best and worst countries for LGBTQ plus travelers. So this is important if you are uh, of that group and you don't want to go to an area where you're going to be discriminated against. But it's also important for people who are uh, not interested in any of this stuff, this ideology. So, uh, you know, like you could plan your vacation around a place that uh, you won't be uh, idealized and, uh, you know, force fed all this stuff anyway let's go ahead and have a look in order to help lgbtq tourists travel safely the german portal spartacus started publishing the gay travel index the gaycation uh in 2024 edition the ranking compared 213 countries and territories territories based on the situation of lesbian gay bisexual transgender intersex and queer people the alts alter alternative living okay so here it is uh, the safest and least safe countries we have green is the safest. Of course, Canada is the safest place on earth for uh, any of those. Um, United States, not so much, a little bit less. Russia, the worst place on earth, obviously, uh, next to uh, some places in the Middle East, the UAE, it looks like. Uh, India down there, same as the United States, interesting. Thailand, which is red, which is not safe, which is interesting because they have uh, tons of uh, ladyboys and things like that interesting southeast asia not a great place for uh this group of people china not inviting so what do we got europe we've got canada we've got some parts of uh south america and australia these are the gay friendly areas so if you're looking to vacation then go there if you're looking to uh to get your gaycation rocking then go to all the western countries because they are completely indoctrinated into this ideology. The flags are flying. They're printed on the streets. I mean, you can't go to the grocery store without seeing pride flags uh, on every aisle. I mean, they're the most represented group I've ever seen in my life. And it's soon to be overtaken by the uh, pro-Hamas Palestinians. So anyway, uh, there's your map. Go ahead and screenshot it. And uh, you can verify where is the best place for you to go to vacation. An exclusive WPATH certified trans identified kink professor who promotes age play and genital torture influence standards of care. Uh oh. Disgusting uh, photograph. A trans identified male associated with the world's leading transgender health lobby group is drawing attention for speculating about experimental artistic and creative genital surgeries. Totally sound. Uh, Laura A. Jacobs, a New York-based psychotherapist who influenced the development of transgender health guidelines regarding gender dysphoria in adolescence, previously contributed a chapter to an anthology in which he promotes BDSM practices including age play and genital torture. Video footage of a TEDx talk given three years ago by Jacobs began circulating on social media this week, drawing criticism for Jacobs' bizarre statement about gender-affirming surgeries. In the clip, which was shared by Gays Against Groomers and Helen Joyce, Jacob states, Medical interventions allow some of us to change our primary and secondary sex characteristics, but it's clear that cisgender bodies are still the reference point. Will technology give us options that are artistic and creative? Do we have to stick to penis and vagina norms? Can we have genitalia that look like flowers and abstract sculptures? Can we have multiple? Can they be interchangeable? No is a strict answer to all that, and you are living in a fantasy. Absolutely, she wants to, or he, whatever, I'm not sure. Hard to tell just visually. Uh, they're referring to him as a he. Uh, he's a certified member of WPATH. His influence in the organization goes far deeper, and he served as an influential member of the committee, which established the most recent standards of care. So yeah, the WPATH files, uh, perhaps we'll have a look at those. Not good. Uh, these people are promoting things 
uh, gender affirmations for people who are definitely uh, just mentally ill and confused and basically you just walk in and say this is how I feel and they're like okay let's get it started let's get the hormones going let's go come back tomorrow we'll give you your injection no problem hormones and handcuffs the intersection of transgender identities BDSM and polyamory Jacobs notes that those who identify as transgender seem almost predisposed to participate in sadomasochistic fetish subcultures. He explains this by placing blame on sexual hostility towards trans-identified individuals, stating that in view, our bodies are often devalued. Yeah, by yourself. You know what I mean? Clearly, when you're willing to uh, chop and slop all that stuff off and uh, just adhere to all kinds of immoral sexual acts, such as what was mentioned there, and you're saying you're predisposed to that. Yeah, because you've gone through a, a serious amount of mental trauma physical trauma probably trauma is the key factor here and therapy doesn't seem to be helping because affirmation is the only therapy right now that anyone is is resorting to anyway uh yeah so this guy here is all about uh kids being sexualized as well uh genital torture involves allowing the dominant to inflict whatever sadistic torment has been previously negotiated so he's a sick uh, another sexual activity endorsed by jacob's medical play entails participants role-playing in a doctor-patient relationship these people are all children. Mentally, mentally, they are children. That's it. They have no accountability, no responsibility, no actual understanding of how things work. They live in a fantasy. They want to be able to change their avatars. They want this. They want that. Gimme, gimme, gimme. If you stand in my way, then you are a bigot. All right. And Lunchables lawsuit, these snack packs are filled with crap, ton of metal. Uh-oh. Well, good thing I never ate this stuff, and neither does my little cubby. Uh, a spokesperson from Kraft Heinz tells TMZ we're aware of the complaint and strongly disagree with the allegations. Certain substances like lead occur in the environment and can be found at low levels in agricultural products. Whether on grocery store shelves, in the products, produce section, or grown in your backyard, our products are safe for consumers and we will vigorously defend our brand, of course. That's what the lawyer told them to say. They're facing class action lawsuits, claims their Lunchables are basically a scrapyard for metals that end up in the mouths of kids everywhere. In the docs obtained by TMZ, Laura Laspiza accuses Kraft of misleading consumers with false advertising about the prepackaged meal kits. She claims they failed to mention the kits contain harmful levels of lead, cadmium, and uh, phthalates, a group of chemicals typically used to make plastic more durable. Ew. And maybe they're using that in the ham. And look at this discolored salami. If you're eating or feeding this to your children, please reconsider. According to the suit, uh, consumer report studies revealed some troubling findings recently, and Laura claims until then the company had convinced her she was buying a safe and nutritious snack. Laspiza and others are claiming they had to toss all their Lunchables in the trash as they no longer felt confident about feeding them to their families. Now Laura, along with many other New York City consumers, are going after KHC for big damages, claiming they would never have purchased the popular meal kits had they known about the potential danger. Obviously, we've reached out to Kraft for comment. So far, no word back. So uh, go ahead and throw out your Lunchables unless you are a sick individual and you want to hurt your children because it seems like Consumer Reports have identified tons of metal, heavy metals, that will gather in your organs and your brain. Go ahead, do your own research. Sigma Tiger will reveal his beautiful face at 10,000 likes, 10,000 subs. We're over 100 and likes were around 500 right now. So let's go ahead, like and subscribe and uh let's see what's going on here what do you think i look like long hair short hair beard mustache we already know about the blueberries sigma tiger signing out